maybe when the specter's gone. Man, it really is difficult to say how how this draft is going to get rounded out. But in my Meow Meow Kitty Rangers, you know, they got to make the same decision. So we'll see here in the next 10 seconds what they think is the most appropriate ban. And they do get rid of the Faceless. Has a little bit of everything. And that is the style of h Dick's draft so far. So that is, I think, a, a very complimentary hero for h Dick that, that uh, Meow Meow Kitty Rangers have gotten rid of to their benefit. <clears throat> for their final pick, how are they going to tie this whole draft together? Man, it's difficult to speculate on it too much. And they are going to go for the Life Stealer, actually. So <clears throat> they have uh, a couple of delivery methods in the Clockwork. And I would say, arguably, I'd argue the Bristleback's a fair enough delivery method, or at least an escape method. Like, they're able to get in the Bristleback and run away. But I don't know how that hero is going to fare in lane. Melee heroes against Tidehunter sort of suffer. And Life Stealer isn't really an exception to that. He can bully the Tide Hunter. <coughs> All right. And with the Crystal Maiden, he'll be able to cast his Flesh Wound sufficiently uh, often to be able to maybe use the Tide Hunter out of XP range, but it's going to cost him in terms of his farming efficiency. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I will say the Clockwork still is really, really strong, even as a first pick. He can walk down a lot of h Dix heroes. Everyone except for the... PL, honestly. <clears throat> and just, well, maybe not. Uh, everyone except for the PL and the Rubik. The Rubik can lift him out of cogs, but. You know, I, I think that clockwork. I think that if we do see a victory out of the Yamaha Kitty Rangers, we're going to see a lot of that on the shoulders of this clockwork, whoever decides to pick it up and play it. Actually, Rutu 2 is going to be doing that. So the Fan Lancer is the final pick for h Dick, and I think that it definitely melds with their draft very well. <clears throat> I see some potential issues in terms of the amount of AoE clear that exists on the Amokiti Rangers team. Um, the Bristleback, of course, with his spines, and possibly an eventual Radiance. It's not a, an item I would you know, advocate very frequently, but against the PL might be okay but of course he is absolutely going to be getting that crimson guard and the pipe is going to be coming out of the viper almost certainly so <clears throat> in that regard it'd be very difficult to finish off the or even really to do a whole lot of damage with your illusions while the bristleback is around and has that active available but we're going to go ahead and get into the game and see how this whole thing ends up going and we can take a look at who is playing what. We do have Obelisk playing on the safe lane Lifestealer. The off lane Bristleback will be played by Zykor for MMKR's side. <coughs> Saltwater Taffy will be playing Viper in the mid lane. Ruja 2 will be playing the 4 position Clockwork. And the 5 Crystal Maiden will be played by Daddy Brine. Meanwhile, on the Radiant side, h Dick are going to be playing with the Titan during the off lane, of course. And that will be picked up by Johnny Magic. And it looks like they might, <clears throat> based on their early movement, be going for a tri-lane in the safe lane, which is very uncommon these days. But their mid, of course, will be uh, Dragon Knight, played by Zeroe. Zero? Zeroe. And Noguchi will be picking up that safe lane PL. Gong Farmer will be playing on the support Rubik. Can't tell whether he's a 4 or 5 just yet. Probably. Actually, both have about the same amount of amount of consumables i would guess we're gonna see uh <clears throat> the five warlock and the four rubik but we'll just see how that ends up shaking out and on the warlock we will have barash kukor well, look who's come crawling back. picking up that hero for his team everyone just positioning to get the one in one room from each side I'm not going to go aggressive into either players or either team's jungle for the time being although it looks like perhaps uh h -tick think that <clears throat> they may be seeing some push forward by the Bristleback, who is a very good level one fighter. And it looks like Daddy Brian is coming down that direction on the Crystal Maiden as well. So maybe we'll see a bit of fighting here. And actually it looks like h are gonna go ahead and get that uh, Dire Rune for free in bottom. Zycor not gonna contest that. Just gonna get picked up by Rubik there, thrown away. And that'll be three runes. 
Is it three runes? The way of, yes, three runes, the way of H-Tick. One going for, oh, we're going to see a tri on both sides, actually. Uh, one going for MMKR. So actually, it does look like we're going to have some setup for <clears throat> both teams going for the safe lane tri lane in this scenario. Daddy Brian going ahead and picking up that level one Frostbite to try to zone out this tight hunter. And if we are going to go for tri lane versus tri lane, a lot of the analysis that uh, I came up with in the drafting phase is going to be, I think, very different. The Bristleback is going to be incredibly strong in this lane. And I don't know if the Warlock really is very important, given that it is a tri lane rather than a dual lane. Although against the Bristleback, you know, maybe you can heal up your support a little bit, heal up yourself. And it does look like, yeah, there is a stick on Rubik, so he's going to be able to heal up very easily. Barash Kakor has to be a little bit careful, taking quite a bit of damage there. Meanwhile, in top lane, it looks like Daddy Brian is going to drop that extra ward, and Rootsitude is going to walk at Johnny Magic, but not cast that battery assault just yet. Just going to zone him out, make sure he doesn't get any XP, and Johnny Magic does not have a single unit of XP just yet, so doing very well at his job there. Meanwhile, Cutcore, you know, at least has half a level. He is forced to go back towards the tower, though, with uh, Gong Farmer and Karash Barash Kukor just completely removing him from any of the creep waves. And it looks like both of the safe lane heroes... Oh, no, it looks like uh, in top lane, we did lose a little bit of control of that wave, so Johnny Magic might even get his level 2 first in this... Or, uh, in this... Uh, towards the end here. Meanwhile, mid lane, it does look like... I don't know, not really any aggression happening, but... Both heroes generally just or all the heroes in the game just happy to be where they are basically uh mild lead for zeroe in terms of last hits in the mid lane but not astounding and right now everyone's just really stable johnny magic has picked up that level two so he's super happy to have that kraken shell and acre smash both available at this point meanwhile cut core has his own level two bristleback and spines and everyone's just quietly going about their business at this juncture in the game it does look like here in mid lanes, Rowie and Childish Gambino are at least consuming each other's regen a little bit. Uh, that Soul Ring, however, is coming out for Zeroe, so this is this lane equilibrium is going to change, I think, rather drastically, or rather quickly. Meanwhile, it looks like Johnny Magic is going to be caught in the cogs. He's not going to be able to get his right clicks off because of that battery assault, and now they're going to go on to Johnny Magic a little bit further, diving into the tower just a touch, but. Gonna take a couple tower shots and back away the anchor smash more than sufficient to protect him through that cog battery assault and flesh heap flesh heap uh, <laughs> and uh, open wounds combination and he'll be okay in the end just gonna salve up in the back lines and not really care much that soul ring is coming out here for zeroe so this lane while it has been mildly in his favor is going to i think start going very much in his favor very shortly Meanwhile, Noguchi has taken, I was going to say has taken a lead because he was heading that direction, but he hasn't actually completed his lead. Uh, still 17 and 8 versus 16 and 6, so, you know, one, two creeps on each side. <clears throat> Not really a whole lot. Meanwhile, it does look like Johnny Magic has gone ahead and moved back. Is that in? Oh, is that camp is blocked now. So, Daddy Brian coming in to block the camp with Sentry that Johnny Magic was picking up. Trying to get some XP while he was zoned completely out of range in lane, and he's not even going to be able to get that. Those creeps are going to be taken by Daddy Brian, actually. A little bit of a turn, or a lot of a turnaround, rather than just a little. <clears throat> and Zoe does go uh, around to pick that, pick up that illusion rune just to get some movement and vision around the map, sending it up to watch the hill over here. However, Rootsu Toot. Heading this direction does have a century ward available, but nothing more than that. Still no first blood in this game. Where is the first blood likely to come? Honestly, first blood in this game I think is going to take a very, very long time. Uh, maybe even like 10, 12 minutes. It's going to depend on somebody overextending in order to try to kill one of these offlaners or remove your rotation. Looks like that rotation is starting now. Rutitude comes in <coughs> and... Uh, Use the battery assault cogs combo, <coughs> but it is insufficient to kill off Zeroe, who has two levels in that dragon blood already. And now he's just gonna head back towards the top, try to zone out Johnny Magic a little bit more. Meanwhile, Cutcore has at least a little bit of damage going on him. He's gonna try to chase down Brashkakor, but a uh, single spirit lance is enough to dissuade him from any of that. Actually, he's gonna get lifted back. 
A little bit of right click here from Noguchi. He's going to dash forward with the Phantom Rush. Go for one more Spirit Lance. It's very close. He's going to try to chase him down. And this will be it. He's going to want. He's going to... Oh, he lost Vision. So this might be the overextension we were talking about. And turns out not to be, in fact. Barashikor, it gets rooted instead. But he's just going to heal up. And nothing that Daddy Grind can do to stop him. So still, no first blood. An attempted kill onto Cutcore, or Zycor, rather, who manages to just eke his way out with a little bit of extra move speed from those boots and the vision, uh, the vision game at night. <clears throat> I think it's because uh, this ward, actually, when he lost vision out of range of that. So meanwhile, in bottom lane, still going to be the same 3v1. Or actually, there might be a second hero coming in. Daddy Brian is, however, going to be spotted here by Gong Farmer. Gong Farmer does get frozen. He's going to lift up Daddy Brian into the trees. Zykor coming in. And uh, that's that's it. Neither team really wants to commit too hard to any kind of movement. Top lane, there's going to be an open wound on Johnny Magic, followed by an Anchor Smash. The Anchor Smash will keep him alive for a while, as well as that Kraken Shell. And now the cog combo comes out, but all the battery assaults are hitting creeps. He's still okay for the time being. He's barely going to survive because of all those battery assaults hitting creeps in the back lines. Only one creep in the back lines. That was stupendously lucky on uh, Johnny Magic's part. So now it looks like Daddy Brian is going to attempt a gank onto mid lane with a haste stream. Trying to take out Zoe, but I don't know, like, killing Zoe here is going to be really, really difficult. It looks like uh, Saltwater Taffy is only at half HP anyway. So yeah, they're just going to abandon the idea of this. Not even going to try it. Taking a look at the CS and Nice, it has gone a little bit further into Life Stealer's direction at this point with 38 and 12, which is the 28 and 10, or uh, rather the 28 and 14 on uh, Phantom Lancer. Meanwhile, mid lane is very even, so... Looks like H-Stick falling very, very slightly behind in the laning situation here, and just in terms of last hits, but not a team really getting a huge advantage over the other. Um, H-Stick has actually 1k extra gold, or uh, at least a minor lead, you know, not a full 1k lead over, uh, over MMKR overall. <coughs> Johnny Magic, meanwhile, sitting in the trees, getting some XP. Daddy Brian going to come, try to freeze him up. There's going to be the Frostbite, followed by some Battery Assault into a Cog. And Johnny Magic is going to be able to just walk away for the time being. Still has four stick charges. And, yeah, he's not even afraid. Meanwhile, mid lane, some more Breathe Fire going out into Saltwater Taffy, along with some just casual right clicks to get the last hits on range creeps. Uh, eight minutes in, no first blood yet. Lots of attempts, but not a whole lot of commitment. Uh, besides this attempt here in bottom and even then after uh, a single TP was threatened uh, Mr. Lancer decided to run back through the trees and live to fight another day on the yes Gucci oh, Damn that was really far back looks like a DD was used to get under the tower um, for uh, under H Dick's tower and Viper was able to finish off Tidehunter after he got pushed back by Rootoot and uh, Daddy Brian. So finally, first blood coming out. Even so, does it matter? I mean, now it's less than a 1k lead in... I mean, it is, it is an exchange that is certainly in favor of MKR, but it's still... And the counter kill in bottom actually comes at the same time. <coughs> so... Both offlaners going down once and right back to less than a 1k lead for h -Dick. So the question I think ends up becoming who has the stronger mid game here? Because the early game, you know, is generally very even for the laning stage for these two teams. But how is that going to translate into <coughs> the way that the mid game shakes out? And I do think that h -Dick have potentially the stronger mid-game opportunities. Johnny Magic gonna run away here. Barush Kukor healing him up. No, actually doing damage to uh, to Rutitut with that instead. Trying to finish him off with that link, but it's not going to happen. Daddy Brian and Rutitut 
and Johnny Magic are all going to be totally okay. Meanwhile, Saltwater Taffy you know, just keeping up with the Zeroe, everybody. I mean, two kills in ten minutes, what can I say? It's been a very measured performance from both teams. Neither team really wanting to overplay their hand here in the laning stage. And uh, <coughs> just each team playing their own game. I will say, there is the same amount of gold on both offlaners. I was going to say they're slightly more on somebody, but I would be a liar. So even the offlaners have basically the same amount of gold. Uh, Bristleback keeping his while Johnny Magic collects to go for the extra armor out of that chainmail. <coughs> um, presumably for a blade mail later. Oh no, just a casual chainmail looks like going into a mech. <coughs> After he picks up an energy booster, so he'll be getting the Greaves this game, it appears. Daddy Brian going to be caught out by a ward. They're going to run after him, but that is going to be a frostbite to dissuade any actual movement. Cut core running after no Gucci. Take doing a quick bit of damage with those spines, but he's just going to get slowed up, held in place by the Rubik for a little while, and that'll be more than enough time for no Gucci to run away. Daddy Brian doing a little bit of damage from the Crystal Nova while going into the slow from Warlock, and actually Zycor. Uh, so close. He's going to take one more right click from Noguchi on the other side with the dash, and he will go down at the same time. <laughs> we do lose Johnny Magic in the top lane to Mr. Obelisk. So, once again, both off laners going down basically at the same time. I mean, this time at the same time, whereas last time it was, you know, merely very close in time. And it looks like we are going to see the dragon that's come out. There's a first item for Saltwater Taffy. <clears throat> and the Shadow Blade is going to be the pickup of choice for Dragon Knight, a reasonable choice, given that it does cancel so many passes that are important on the enemy cores in this game. Johnny Magic uh, <clears throat> a ways away from his arcane boots, but you know he's all right with that, and it does look like yeah, Zykor has finally gotten that Ring of Health, and he is going to be aiming for that Vanguard this game. And looking for the Crimson Guard in the end. There's gonna be a hook here onto Rubik, but the lift onto Rutitute in exchange or in return is going to ensure that he survives. A little bit of damage coming out from Daddy Brian trying to nuke him down with the Crystal Nova, but it's not gonna be sufficient. Freezing off Warlock to prevent that upheaval from zoning out all of his allied heroes. And still no uh, no actual results here from that kill. One ward is thrown behind the tower here. And we're gonna see how that shakes out. Rubik just did TP away, so it is 3v2 down here, but it looks like Zeroe is heading in this direction to turn this around if there is actual movement. So Daddy Brian, <clears throat> there is full vision from MMKR under this tier one tower. And we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, Noguchi also seems to be incredibly aware of what's going on. Barash Kukor is going to get cogged up. He's going to try to get the heal off. He does get the heal off. Goes ahead and puts the golem down on everybody. And now Zeroe is coming in from the backside. A trade. A one support for one support for the time being. Cut core actually would have... No, not actually taping, taking out Noguchi here. Uh, he just purges or runs away from a spine with that double ganger. And now Bristleback is going to go down. And with Johnny Magic TPing in to use that Ravage, we will lose Rutitude as well on that Tidehunter. Or not Tidehunter, on that Clockwork. So overall... Uh, three, no, two for one, uh, in favor of a stick who have taken a minor lead once again in the network in this game. However, at the same time, Obelisk and Viper being played by Saltwater Taffy were able to push in their respective lanes, and it might actually be with this movement from Daddy Brian once this, uh, once this dragon form goes down, an attempt at a tower kill but oh he's actually gonna dive here the tower is taken up by saltwater taffy his is gonna go ahead and tp away he says i know you can't kill me you don't have any stuns so he's able to get out tower kill was picked up by saltwater taffy first tower of the game going towards viper <coughs> and that swings the lead right back over to mmkr rutitude here picks up the invis room but it is in vision of warlock so we're actually of course gonna tell his team you know, GTFO, we're not doing this. <clears throat> but it does look like uh, Zykor has a stack going for him in this ancient camp. This might actually be the game changer for uh, for MMKR, what turns this game from just a completely even 
uh, you know, everybody's got all the same gold and all the same items, or similarly themed items, to a game that actually has some uh, differential between the teams. And it does look like using, not even using the hook, you're too able to use that Invisering just to get on top of Dragon Knight, and Solid Taffy takes him down. <coughs> So that's actually going to be the biggest lead of the game so far between that kill and the stack picked up by Zykor. Uh, full, well, it was 2k for a moment, just uh, probably like 1.8k lead right now in favor of MMKR. However, it does. No, that tower's not going to go down. Zykor's just going to sit here and be like, you know, I got a Vanguard now. PL, you don't bother me. <coughs> Wait, PL? Holy crap. That's actually a 15 minute defusal blade. Probably was a 14 minute defusal blade on top of treads. Uh, did skip the aqua of this game, but <clears throat> Slay Course completely run out of mana. I was not expecting that quite so early. Childish Gambino, meanwhile, is rotating down, but his rotation is spotted out by this ward over here. And he is, you know, just gonna say a uh, hook attempted here by Rootsitoot, but not quite gonna connect onto Barashka Core. So, Saltwater Taffy is going to say, you know, I couldn't come down and kill you, but I can sure as hell take your tower. However, he's going to lose his tower in the meanwhile, most likely to Zeroe as this happens. So, <coughs> both teams are going to take a little bit of damage, chip damage for the time being. It does look like Zeroe is going to commit that ultimate for Dragon Knight. And we did see not a hook, but Rooster Duke was able to catch Warlock here on the side. Or Rubik here on the side, rather. And pick him up. So, nice uh, nice little bit of objective potential coming the way of h -Dick, Or rather, MMKR. Meanwhile, h uh, do lose their Tidehunter in top lane. Obelisk chasing him down into the tower. And uh, potential TP not actually completed there. Was it frozen by the CM? No, I don't know who was CPing. Now there's going to be a freeze onto Yuki Noguchi, and he's going to throw that Spirit Lane down, but it's not going to be able to make anything happen. One tower for one tower right now, uh, but a couple of pickoffs by MMKR. And they do have now a 3k lead. Once again, the highest lead there has been this whole game. Uh, go ahead and take a look at top. Looks like MMKR are going to take a second hero top, a second tower top in this single push, and the Radiance is finished here for Obelisk. He decides to go for the Radiance as his first item. Uh, probably gonna run around in Zykor or inside of an Ancient using that for a little while. And Bristleback, meanwhile, is gonna get stunned up by that Dragon Tail. However, there is gonna be the pool of lava from the poison attack preventing any of the passes from frocking, so nobody wants to walk through on the side of Aishtik. Crystanova is used just to zone, it looks like, in the backside. Uh, broken on Bristleback for a short while, but not a whole. Oh, actually, he's broken for uh, quite a while because Gong Farmer has that poison attack, the nether toxin. So Zycor is going to be finished off here. However, it looks like PL was cleared up on the right side of this fight <coughs> prior to that. However, Daddy Brian and Childish Gambino are linked at this point. And attempt to CP away, but it's not going to work. And a Dragon Tail is going to go out onto Saltwater Taffy. He's going to go down as well. Meanwhile, however, top lane is getting pushed in by Mr. Obelisk. And... You know, a, a good exchange for h Tech, though they, of course, don't want to lose their PL. And they are going to get at least a Tier 1 out of this, but not really what they would find ideal, I think. They got a couple picks, but it's not, not going to make the hugest difference in the world. And Mr. Obelisk actually is going to go ahead and pick up a... Almost has completed, in fact, his... No talisman is not the word. Uh, his solar crest. So he's going to be able to take Roach here very quickly. Meanwhile, however, h Chick does get some illusions with the dragon form active. So he might be able to push some towers for this or take some creep camps, it looks like. And he's going to choose a ladder option in that. Uh, just getting that regen at the very end of your dragon form. You know, a little bit of extra value. Still though, less than one kill per minute in this game overall. <clears throat> a very still, you know, incredibly stable. Zykor here, gonna chase down Barashka Core. Barashka Core is going to die here. Um, 
But is there going to be a turnaround? And it looks like the answer is no. In fact, Johnny Magic was headed into that direction. He might get picked up here. He's going to TP away. Daddy Brian is going to try to get in the area, but he's not quite going to get close enough for Frostbite in time. So Daddy Magic, or Johnny Magic, just able to walk away. TP away, rather. Meanwhile, Noguchi is taking this top tower for uh, from MMKR. While his own tower in the bottom is going to be pushed shortly, but it's not quite going to be there just yet. <laughs> and with the fort, Noguchi is just going to back off until he sees all the heroes bottom. And he says, well, I can see all of you. I'm going to go ahead and finish this tower off. We're not going to fight this. It looks like Johnny Magic will delay as much as he can, and Gong Farmer will do the same. Oh, actually, they're going to go ahead and burn the Ravage throughout the upheaval. But Mr. Obelisk does get his ra or Rage off just in time. However, he's going to lift it up. Once that's up, there's going to be the hook back on the Warlock in the back line. So he does not have his Golem up just yet. There's going to be a massive, massive freezing field. Yuki no Gucci is going to die from it in the end. Actually, I actually think a Radiant Stick. Nope, that was the freezing field was the bit to finish it off. Gong Farmer taking quite a bit of damage from Zykor, who is sitting under the tower with that Vanguard and Cloak and just dishing out the damage with all of that, all of the spine stacks he has on everybody. And this will be a tier two going the way of MMKR, who have turned the what was an incredibly stable even match into something where it seems like they have a very a, a, a clear but slight lead in uh, in the way that their heroes are shaking out in this mid game. And I think a lot of that comes down just to the fact that they are less timing dependent. Uh, Zroe on the Dragonite, of course, is very dependent on the Elder Dragon form. Uh, the Golem has a very long cooldown, as does the Ravage for Johnny Magic and Barash Kakor. So, not having any really big long cooldown ultimates, except, you know, mildly the hook shots. Uh, MMKR are able to turn, turn fights into tower pushes without as much fear of being turned around upon by not having their big ultimates. <coughs> and they have done that. Gong Farmer getting a little bit of farm here in the mid lane, trying to get that four step up for his team. And it does look like Mr. Obelisk with that Solar Crest is going to go ahead and go into the pit and take down Roshan Zykor, taking quite a bit of damage. But he'll just back up. He's getting the minus armor stacks off on the Viscous Nasal Goo. <coughs> Noguchi is sitting in the back line. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a, a clash here going on. Mr. Obelisk hitting onto Zeroe quite a bit with the sentry in the area. Mr. Gucci running under that nether toxin. <coughs> and now we're going to see the dragon tail come out onto Rutitu, who's not going to get away. The golem is dropped, and that's going to be the end of. Well, not the end of anybody, actually. Golem's not going to matter. Rook's going to turn around on PL's going to die with that freezing field. And the golem is finished off as well. This is going to delay the Roshan for a short while, I think, while MMKR go and shrine. But. And they're going to be happy to just run back in. <coughs> and actually, Mr. Obelisk says, I'm just going to take an Ancient and run immediately back into the pit. I am not afraid of what H Dick can bring to his table right now. <coughs> so he will go ahead and try to finish off this Roshan. Zykor coming in with the uh, extra HP from the Shrine is going to go ahead and tank that up so that Mr. Obelisk can finish it. And that's Roshan will finally go the way of MMKR. <coughs> Saltwater Taffy, meanwhile, is going to be just picked off here in the mid lane. Zykor going in to try to turn this around a little bit, but he was half HP already, and I think he's just going to end up dying. Taking quite a bit of damage. Yeah, he's going to end up being taken out by Johnny Magic in the end, but taking a quite a bit of damage from that Fade Bolt, which did uh, bring him low enough for Anchor Smash, I assume. Maybe a Gush. However, cannot uh, take away the Aegis from Obelisk, <coughs> now that he has it. Unless, of course, you kill him, which did not happen, so... <laughs> we do see he's going for another Sacred Relic uh, in the Nullifier here. This is uh, a very greedy build, it seems like to me, except for maybe the um, the Solar Crest, uh, used for taking Roche and you know, just giving a little bit of armor invasion against that PL. But uh, 
I need a little bit of evasion from the Radiance as well. So actually, since PL doesn't really like MKB very much, doesn't affect his illusions, uh, potentially this is a, a, a... It's working for them, clearly. It's just, it feels incredibly greedy in terms of the item choices. <clears throat> but he is going to have that second relic very shortly. I'm uh, going to clear up a couple more pre put camps, and it looks like maybe MMKR gathering for a smoke here. <clears throat> they do have one available on Daddy Brine, or that Crystal Maiden, and everyone's in the same area. Yeah, this is going to be a smoke play. And Rustitude going to deliver a life stealer with that hook shot once he finds an opportunity. Zycor, he pops going uphill on that uh, smoke. The rest of the smokes are popped as well, and <clears throat> not be able to catch anybody. Actually, they are going to go ahead and grab the Warlock. Uh, not going to show that they have. They are going to go ahead and expend that infest. So Warlock is down. He did have Golem, so this is important, at least for a push in. Like it does allow them to get some. Does allow MMKR to get some damage, I think, onto this mid tower, which is what they are going to be attempting. And with the Aegis on lock as well, <coughs> they, yeah, they they may choose to go for high ground here, since this is the final T2 available, try to get a T3 out of it, but I doubt that. Another Toxin is stolen by Rubik. Middle tower, has Middle tower goes down, and it looks like for now, MMKR are going to be satisfied with that. They may try to turn back around and make something happen. And there is going to be a hookshot available again in 15 seconds. Which may be MMKR's cue to head back in to this fight. It's a difficult fight for sure. Fighting, fighting up against Golem and Ravage and Dragon Form, and this is you know the counter side to Aegis Draft. While they are very timing dependent, during those timings, it is very difficult to actually run up into them because they you know they have a lot of really powerful spells. They're just very strong as a team when they have all their spells available. <coughs> So everyone's going to head back to farming. Uh, we go ahead and switch over to that net worth meter. We do see a you know a, a clear lead on life stealer, um, but basically the entire net worth lead for MMKR is tied up on, in Obelisk, <clears throat> who by the way does almost have enough for buyback plus his relics. So I expect he'll be picking that up very shortly. And in fact, a lot of that gold is sitting on the life stealer at the moment. Whereas most of the gold, I believe, is you know currently spent. Yeah, almost all the gold is currently spent on uh, <clears throat> on Barash Kakor's team. So deceptively even in this game <laughs> at this point. Even though it's still only a, a five to six k gold lead, it's twenty eight minutes. So like that doesn't really matter a whole lot. It just depends on which team chooses their fights better, which team plays their fights better, and. So far, there's not really been a, a super conclusive answer. <clears throat> MMKR have a mild advantage for the time being. Uh, I do think that HDIC scale mildly better. So MMKR have a little bit of a timer, but not a whole lot. Both teams scale very well. So a lot of this is just going to come down to, honestly, I think, uh, endurance. This does feel like a game that's going to be the, the first major mistake loses. And is this smoke here? Yes, this is a smoke. So Rootsitute and Saltwater Safi roaming around with that Life Stealer inside. Gonna go ahead and get that grab onto Barashka Core, who attempts to get his Golem off and does do so. Also expending the Dragon Form and the Ravage. Mr. Obelisk trying to hit people in the meanwhile. While Clockwork is taking a ton of damage, Mr. Obelisk also taking quite a bit of damage and loses his Aegis actually right now in the middle of the fight. So if he gets killed here, he's dead for good. Does not get killed. In fact, Yuki Noguchi, however, is going to go on to Zykor, who feeds to save his team. And uh, on the back lines, I did not see... It looks like Daddy Brian managed to actually take out uh, Ty Hunter in the back line. Viper's going to go down here in the middle as well. Clockwork running after Noguchi and gonna be actually finished off by Daddy Brian. Clockwork dying in return to a final dragon tail. <clears throat> Daddy Brian no longer has any mana available for doing anything. The pull out of Rubik Gong Farmer is gonna go ahead and grab that frostbite from Daddy Brian. Mr. Obelisk did heal up quite a bit from I presume a shrine usage as well as hitting some creeps. No, not even a shrine usage, just hitting a bunch of creeps. Probably probably 
yeah, infesting a creep and popping out. <clears throat> but uh, his hyperstone uh, dropped on the ground. Gonna gotta decide what we're gonna do here. Drop the mango, attack the mango, take the hyperstone, and it looks like he's actually gonna go for the assault cuirass instead of the. Uh, oh, take that. Instead of the. What was he going for before? It was the nullifier. <clears throat> I think this is a much less greedy option and it is still going to be very <clears throat> effective for what he wants to do. Since there haven't been any BKBs coming out yet for uh, H Dick, especially, although I would expect a BKB to come next for Zeroe here. <clears throat> Actually, what's on the courier? My nah, courier's just going to Secret Shop for Noguchi, who is about ready to pick up his Mansa style. So once again, both teams just sitting back, getting some farm in the lanes. <coughs> Man, it seems like the Naga games from uh, back from TI4. When uh, when the crowd was cheering because somebody blocked a camp or to manage to make a stack and take it on the Ancients or something. No Gucci speaking, I was going to go ahead and take his own Ancients. And Mr. Obelisk taking from the enemy side of the map with that uh, <coughs> Radiance Assault Kuros both complete at this point. And he's going to go for the Mega Basher in the Abyssal Blade next. So getting ready for sort of that long-term, I'm going to finish you off style. But, you know, both teams still just playing it safe. <coughs> Up to a 6k lead on MMKR's side. But that does mean less as the time or as the time goes on in this game, like a 6k lead of 32 minutes, probably equivalent to that 5k lead they had at 28 minutes. But <coughs> they are maintaining their advantage, so they you know have this much extra wiggle room in terms of how many stakes they can make before this game is over for them. So, you know, good for them. Saltwater Taffy looks like does have his Mjolnir completed up <coughs> and gonna be able to keep those lanes pushed out very effectively as a result. Zykor has his hood on top of the Crimson Guard and is going for Halbert, it appears. Uh, Rootsitute on the Clockwork <coughs> has a Vanguard now on top of that Spirit Vessel. <coughs> a very effective item in this match. Just throw it on whoever Warlock is healing and you don't really gotta worry about it so much. <coughs> and especially once the heart comes out for Noguchi, which is going to be his next pickup. Already has it queued up in his item choices, or in his quick buy, rather. Then we will go ahead and see <coughs> that be thrown probably just onto the PL. Uh, additionally, it helps mark which one is real if you're able to get on the right one. He can purge it, but at least it's a little bit of damage and heal prevention. <coughs> Meanwhile, Gong Farmer has finished up that four staff. I don't believe I mentioned Warlock finished his, uh, or when Warlock finished his Glimmer Cape, which was a while back. Is this a smoke? This does appear to be a smoke coming out from H. Dick's sign. They're trying to decide where they want to play this. There actually is a counter smoke, or rather a, a smoke happening from MMKR first. The smoke, the counter smoke then comes out of H. Dick, who are going to walk up this hill directly into, yeah, Barash Bacor is like, oh, fuck, I'm walking away. And Titer's going to actually four staff, four and go ahead and get the Ravage off, gets it off, and gets everybody in the Ravage. Five men. That's going to be also the Golem onto four after the link. Tons of damage coming out, but it just doesn't matter. The tankiness of the of the MMKR heroes is insane, honestly. Like, that was, uh, that was a fight that was not really the best in terms of positioning, but the initiation was spot on. They had the five-man Ravage, followed up by the link onto four, followed up by the five-man Chaotic Offering, and, you know, it just didn't matter. There's a lot of HP on MMKR's side, and it's difficult for h to chew through that. A couple buybacks coming out from Phantom Lancer and Barash Kakor on the Warlock. <coughs> They're going to go ahead and break the Bristleback, set them up with the Dragon Tail. But it's not going to be able to kill him off just yet. It's like we're taking a bit more damage from a couple of Spirit Lances and Illusion sitting off. Noguchi. Everyone's going to get slowed up here on the exchange. Noguchi's going to go after Saltwater Taffy, and they are going to go ahead and be able to grab... Okay, I got this stun. Nope, no stun. They are going to go ahead and grab Viper as they... I'm okay, our heroes all retreat. But that's the only hero they're going to get. The TP out from Mr. Obelisk does ensure that. Or the successful TP out, rather, from Mr. Obelisk does ensure that. 
There's DD in bottom, should either team, you know, roam that direction here in the next 90 seconds or so. Or, you know, minute or so, rather. At this point. Rutitut looks like is going for a Veil of Discord as his next major item, and has nearly finished that up. <coughs> However, it does look like he's going to be grabbed here by Zeroi, who gets the initiation off with the Dragon Tail and the Silver Edge. Rutitut does get the trap off. And Zeroi is stuck in here a little ways. There's not really any way for them to send him out. Wait, was there? Bash? Ah, Bash. Did get bashed by Obelisk. Thought he could just TP away for free. And that was not to be the case. <coughs> Daddy Brian, meanwhile, looking like maybe he wants to scare Johnny Magic a little bit. I don't know if that's going to work very well in this game. Oh, actually, he might get the Courier. Nah, two hits, that's going to be enough to keep him dead. So, uh, <coughs> Daddy Brian pings out that DD rune 15 seconds before it expires, so doesn't look like anybody's going to go ahead and get it. Uh, do you have a gem? Ah, uh, yes, gem picked up by Daddy Brian. Did not notice that until now, but he does have it available, so able to get those D wards off with maximum efficiency. And the DD, just before it expires, is picked up by Saltwater Tappy. However, <coughs> the Archon rune, Arcane rune is top. Second Roshan is going the way of Team MMKR. And Obelisk presumably going to pick this one up as well. Yeah, he has made room for it and grabs that right up. So we do go ahead and see and the cooldowns are back available for the big ultimates of h -Dick. They have lost one tier 3 tower, <coughs> but they still have the tools to hold as long as they don't get caught outside the base. Um, and, you know, they try to smoke and just get caught up into the high ground with an enemy smoke at the same time. Meanwhile... Uh, Saltwater Tappy gonna go ahead and take the frontline role in this push. <coughs> Maybe? Nope. Zycor is gonna take his rightful place on the throne. <coughs> Excuse me. Gets that Mjolnir cast on him by Saltwater Tappy and he just walks up into the creeps and says, I don't really care. Gonna go ahead and get broken up by Dragonite. But Zeroe says, I don't want to be part of this really. Mr. Alba's coming in. He goes ahead and gets the Flesh Wound. The open wound off onto Warlock. There's going to be the Ravage. Hits onto two and able to get Mr. Obelisk on the backside. So this is going to be the end of Bristleback before. Oh no, he had the cheesy timed that so well. And with all of that commitment, it does look like that's going to be the end of Dragon Knight. The Golem does go out and hits clean people, but they weren't blinked beforehand. And there's not really anything else that uh, Warlock can do right now with his cooldowns up. <coughs> Now there's going to be a Dragon Tail here onto Lifesteal, but he has the Aegis, so he doesn't really want to make the one going in here. Roots 2 forced, or walks forward and traps H Dick, or uh, traps Zeroe in the cogs while the rest of his team hits onto these buildings. And the barracks are going to go down. Roots 2 might lose his life for it. He's walking away, but his legs, I mean, you know, maybe he dies, maybe he doesn't. Actually, with the uh, movement forward from Lifestealer to hold him in place, that's going to be the Aegis burn for Mr. Obelisk, but that is going to be for a Rax. <coughs> And Mr. Obelisk does go ahead and rage right away, trying to walk away. Mm, looks like this will be largely successful as an extraction, and not just largely, but entirely successful as an, as an extraction for MMKR. Able to get the Rex, able to get out, and don't lose a single team member in the process. Masterfully executed. MMKR going to go ahead and <coughs> grab these shrines up now. They could have grabbed him a little bit earlier, but did elect to go for the high ground push first. And to their benefit, it would appear. They have an 18k gold lead at this point, and it feels like they definitely have... They have the power at this point to choose... You know, not choose. They have the power at this point to either win or lose the game. It's going to be very difficult for h Dick to come back into MMKR's heroes with an 18k gold deficit. And MMKR know it. So they're happy to set up high ground. Take a look at buybacks. It looks like <coughs> the only buybacks available for h Dick are going to be on Tidehunter and Rubik. Rubik, you know, fairly meaningful if you're able to get an extra couple of spells off. But Johnny Magic, you know, you have your Ravage and that's it. Good Farmer, or Gong Farmer, for staffing Johnny Magic away after he gets abyssal by Mr. Obelisk. And uh, that's going to be a hook shot in onto Good Farmer. He's going to pick up, pick up the uh, Clockwork and stun... <coughs> Stun Life Stealer is coming back in. Zycor taking quite a bit of damage, but he's dealing out quite a bit of damage as well. And Daddy Brian actually gets a fantastic zoning ultimate off 
forcing Noguchi to take this fight in alone under his BK for the time being. But now there's the Ravage coming out. Hits onto all five. Everyone gets linked. This is going to be the turnaround. That h stick need. If they're able to get it, two down, three down. Zeroe might die here on the backside, but now he's going to survive. Everyone getting away with five or six, or, you know, 50 HP. Gem is dropped. Looks like it will be picked up by Saltwater Taffy. He's going to go ahead and hit on Barashnikor. One, two, three, four. Oh, one more. Mjolnir Proc would have done it, but he actually gets rooted up by Gong Farmer with that stolen Frostbite. And how did... I did not see... <clears throat> oh, wait, he got Barashnikor on the backside. Okay. So Barashnikor did end up dying too. Um some nether toxin or corrosive skin combo or something but that is exactly the kind of defense that h stick needs to be able to pull off consistently in order to get back into this game they did manage to cut the 18k gold lead into a 13k gold lead so if they do that you know three more times then they <coughs> should be able to bring it back to even at which point they stand a very fair chance of pulling this game up a uh, very deep dive uh, enabling that from the side of just uh, from the side of MMKR. But not to be dissuaded, <coughs> MMKR go ahead and just keep farming up, keep playing their own game. They say, yeah, you beat us in one fight, but we still have the advantage by far. <coughs> this tower can be knocked down with one right click at this point uh, from one of the more farmed heroes, or rather from uh, Obelisk on that life stealer on MMKR's side. Meanwhile, uh, <coughs> Zeroe, it looks like, is going to go for an Assault Kyros of his own, about halfway there at this point. <coughs> Excuse me. Barash Kakor has his Aghanims completed, so there's going to be two Golems coming out of each of these war Excuse me, Warlock Ultimates. Noguchi uh, did show his BKB in the previous fight. Elected to go for that before he got the Heart, <coughs> since he had to have the buyback as well. And he's going to go for the Heart next, as his follow-up to the BKB. Mr. Obelisk uh, attempts to get close enough for an open wounds using the Rage, but not really going to be successful in that regard. The Rootitude not quite in the right position for a hook with that creep camp blocking the way, so Scott free getaway for PL. <coughs> but at this point, uh, h stick are feeling rather confined. They don't really want to leave their base much, and who can really blame them, honestly? Even KR say, we know that that's the case, so we're just going to go ahead and take your top shrine to match the bottom one. And only gonna commit two heroes to that, so the rest of our heroes keep farming around the map while you guys are constricted to a lane and a half, basically. So that shrine will go down. <coughs> MMKR showing, you know, as I said before, a very measured play style, which is serving them very well, given the current meta. And h you know, showing the same, just My very minor little bits and pieces of the game sort of adding up to get to this point. Uh, one sort of botched fight down here at the Roche Pit and one botched fight uh, coming up the hill. And honestly, this this was as much luck as anything else. Like, <clears throat> you know they're smoked, but you don't really 100% expect them to be right here on top of this hill while you're walking up it. Maybe you think they're coming around this way, but... Granted, of course... In that scenario, knowing everything, you want to walk around, walk around the other way. Uh, P Crystal Maiden is picked off here by PL. <coughs> uh, just seeing the back lines, looks like maybe she was looking to get some wards up or get some D wards. Uh, doesn't have that gem anymore, so has bought some more wards herself. Does look like some cogs are stolen by Gong Farmer, doing quite a bit of work in keeping uh, Ritsu from being able to escape in the easterly direction, but he is able to hook off out to his. Uh, out to his Viper. I think I'll be happy with that result. <coughs> so there's Roshan here. Should be spawning in anywhere from 20 seconds to 3 minutes and 20 seconds. So we will go ahead and get a chance to see when that uh, spawn does come out. <coughs> hey, it looks like maybe they fixed it. Uh, this this timer here in the Roshan was broken for a long time. We'll see when it flips over if it is still fixed. <coughs> Excuse me. And that will tick over here right now. That's going to be a very short Roshan respawn. Uh, 30 seconds after the minimum time. And both teams... Both teams are going to want to go for this. And MMKR are, are certainly in the area. They're waiting for the Roshan, it looks like. Unless they're getting ready to smoke. Yep, they are getting ready to smoke. Gathering up here as a team. 
Bruce Toot going ahead and picking up his payload, getting ready to deliver it via that hook shot. <clears throat> and might try to go for this. Uh, th in. Yeah, MMKR, I don't know if they're going to be able to find what they're looking for here. Uh, H-Stick have been very safe in their play. It looks like... Yeah, the Manta is called out. Zykor does pop his smoke. The Manta has already been used. There's going to be the hook shot. Going to go here onto Noguchi. Uh, but the Doppelgang is used to dodge the Infest Bomb. Noguchi using the BKB also to dodge the damage from Saltwater Tappy and the Extra Soul is coming out after that. And he's able to walk away. But the BKB was expended. So trading smoke for BKB. Probably an okay exchange um, for MMKR. If they're able to take this Roshan with it, or if they're able to take, take another objective with it. Seems like, I don't care about obje objectives, I just want to get my wards down, dude. And, you know, she does. <clears throat> Gets the wards down. Very, you know, nice, aggressive lane wars to see when people are coming to deal with this Roche pit. Once it is spotted out, the time has passed, and... I wonder when MMKR are gonna walk into the pit and see... And that, uh, that they have the ability to go ahead and grab this for themselves once again. Yeah, it is spotted out now. Daddy Brian choosing now, using that Crystal Nova to to uh, look inside the pit and spot out the Roshan. Mr. Obelisk going to go ahead and grab it up. <coughs> Still has space. And he is going back for the Nullifier, it does look like, after he's grabbed the rest of his item. But for the time being, he's going to be happy to pick up this Aegis. However... You know, H Dick are ready for this. They pop the smoke, they get the rabbit off, and uh, they don't actually get the rabbit off on the infest. He infests inside Roots too while the rabbit is happening, so he's able to dodge the stun, getting out of the infest, and he's trapped in the cogs here with Dragonite, who's just barely able to get away, but he gets smoked, and Daddy Brian with no HP left, actually finishing him off. Johnny Magic almost able to finish him with a gush, but he gets backed off. And even though that fight was. You know, about as well as you can make it happen. Uh, a couple of really, uh, for h uh, a couple of really quick reflexes uh, coming out from MMKR and some very, like, on the edge of their hero's capability style plays, like, knowing the, knowing the limits of their hero very, very well uh, plays from Daddy Brian and uh, from Rootitude. Mm. MMKR were able to take the fight. So now, even without the Aegis, <coughs> wanting to force a couple buybacks, it looks like MMKR are going to walk up the hill. The Avalanche, or Agonims, is finished on, MM, or on Johnny Magic, so he's able to get that minus armor from the Gush off on everybody. Going to see the break here on two Bristleback, that's not going to be able to do a whole lot just yet. And with the ult coming out from Viper onto Tidehunter, that's going to be the end of, the, of Daddy Magic, Johnny Magic. <coughs> And now the silence talent comes out, so HJ can't even get the stun off when he goes on to Zycor there. Trying to throw out some breathe fires, just prevent the damage a little bit. Daddy Brian is sitting in the back lines. He is ready for a play. He's going to go ahead and make that play, popping off that ultimate, uh, just zoning everybody out of the creep wave. And now there's going to be the hook shot in onto Phantom Lane, so he's able to get the double gang off, trying to run away with the BKB, and he's going to get back up onto the hill, but that's okay. Uh, MMKR have managed to take out the top barracks and they're about to take out the bottom barracks as well so that is mega creeps in favor of mkr with a 33 code gold lead here at 48 minutes <coughs> no ggs called yet but <coughs> it looks like mmkr are going for that gg regardless taking off one two your four picking up the other two four there is a uh, an, an upheaval coming out trying to get some souls off but daddy brian just four steps through it and goes ahead and cross bites onto the warlock to prevent that uh, Zeroi <coughs> here, forced to reveal before he Dragon Tails. Uh, doesn't get the break off, it looks like. And overall, you know, a little bit of scrappiness heading here at the very end of the game, but Creeps and Saltwater Tappy and Obelisk just gonna hit this tower, or hit this Ancient until it falls. And there it goes. GG, well played. Game one goes to Meow Meow Kitty Rangers. Um, <coughs> both teams playing very well this game. A lot of fun to watch. And just... <clears throat> very measured Dota from these teams in this game. So we're going to go ahead and hop into the lobby for the next game. And I hope you enjoyed. For the curious, I am not streaming on Twitch today because there is a strike uh, for Amazon workers. <clears throat>
and I'm sure they would appreciate the solidarity. So you're going to have to watch in-game. I will have the recordings up on YouTube 